Hey sets class, we're going to go over section 8.2, student's t distribution. So when you get in here, uh, oops, uh, this one shows where it gets its name from. So uh, student is a is a uh, kind of a pen name for a, a mathematician. And degrees of freedom is a very important concept here uh, when you get into this. Okay, so this is just some of the properties of the distribution. It's symmetric about zero. It's a bell curve. It's very similar to standard normal. But the big difference is there's more than one t distribution. There's only one standard normal, and there are infinitely many t distributions. Um, and they, they get a different one for every sample size, uh, which gives this thing called the degrees of freedom. The degrees of freedom is the sample size minus one. But for every sample size, there's a different t distribution. All right, so let's look at this problem, like how to find a specific value of t, like a critical value. So this is very similar to z alpha over 2 uh, that we were doing in the last couple of sections. So this is a t alpha. This is a, a number on the t axis that has an area of 0.025 to the right of it. So when we uh, do these problems, they, they show us how we can do it with these tables. And that's perfectly fine if you want to do it with the tables. Um, but you can also do it with Desmos. So remember when we did Desmos and used normal DIST. And we clicked on mean that gave us the standard normal distribution. I want to show you first of all what the t distribution even is. So if I type t dist, open the parentheses and it asks for the degrees of freedom. So there's 25 degrees of freedom. So I type that in there. You can see that this is almost identical. There's just you have to zoom in really tight to see that there is a difference here. The big difference is the tails. The tails, the z distrib t distribution is a little bit higher. And the z distribution uh, is a little bit taller in the middle, so the t distribution is shorter in the middle. So it's wider in the tails, shorter in the middle. And if you start off like with a really small standard, uh, I mean a sample size, then you can drastically see a difference. But as that sample size, which again controls the degrees of freedom, starts to creep up higher and higher, you just start to not really notice a difference between these. And when we start to get up to something like in the 20s, like we saw before, they're barely, uh, from, from a distance, distinguishable at all. You, you can't really tell a difference completely at all with them. Okay, let's go back to 25, since that's this problem. And and uh, you can see that as, as the sample size gets bigger, the T distribution becomes the Z distribution, like if we went on to infinity with this procedure. All right, now remember, when I was doing this before, when I found a critical number, I didn't use the, the normal DIST command. I could have, but it would involve like guessing and checking. I would have to pick this lower number, and I'm trying to find something that makes the area in the right tail be equal to this 0 0.025 here. And you can see I'm, I'm not big enough. You know, I have uh, not enough area, so I have to come back to the left a little bit. So 2, you can see that I'm a little bit uh, small again. So I have to keep going to the left, and it ended up being 1.96, and that should be familiar to you because 95% uh, was in the middle at negative 1.96 to positive 1.96, and you know that would have left 5% in the tails. Half of that is 0.025, but the t distribution because those tails have a little bit more area. If I plug in that same number, it's too big. I have too much area, so I have to adjust it. And I don't want to play guess and check. You know, I, that's not how I want to do this problem. So if you remember, uh, we used inverse uh, CDF to find a number on the number line that had a given area. We didn't use normal DIST. So I'm going to type in inverse CDF. Open my parentheses, and I just like to copy and paste this in, especially if it's already on the screen. So I'm going to paste in normal DIST just to remind you we pressed a comma here and then typed in the area we wanted, but that area had to be to the left. All right, so I'm given an area to the right. Remember, this notation is uh, the area to the right. So I do 1 minus that, and I got the area to the left. And there it is. There's that 1.96 number. What we're going to do, the nice thing is we're going to do the exact same thing, T distribution, except for it's not normal. So instead of having normal DIST in there, I'm going to replace it with this T D I S T, and then we just have to remember to put degrees of freedom in there. So the 25 degrees of freedom is already in there. 
So there is the number, 2.06 roughly, is the number that has that area to the right of it in this particular T distribution. All right, let's look at uh, how they did the problem and see that we get the same number as if we were to use those tables. So here you can see that they got 2.06 like we did. And here it is, uh, here's what it looks like in the, all right, let's look at another one where we uh, find the area in the left tail that's 0.05. So again, I don't have to do anything special here. Since it's the left tail, I just put 0.05 there. I just have to make sure that my degrees of freedom is the right number. So back this up, make it 11, and there's my number. All right, negative 1.796 roughly. Um, that's 1.796 they're talking about here. It, that's in the right tail. And then they're going to use symmetry and say, well, the opposite of that is the area in the left tail. We don't need to do that with inverse CDF. We can put an area to the left or area to the right. Uh, we, we had to put an area to the left, but we could do one minus to get area to the right. So we don't have to, to do anything like with symmetry to get our number. We can just type in the appropriate area. And it makes it a little bit more user friendly than the tables, which are strictly area to the right. So there's that number in the tables. And again, I can get that directly from uh, typing in the appropriate area in the the command in the inverse CDF command. So I don't, I don't I don't bother with the tables. You're welcome to use the tables if you want, but I don't bother with them. All right, let's do this one. 17 degrees of freedom, and we want the area under the curve to the right. So again, we have to do one minus. If the area to the right is uh, 0.1, then the area to the left is one minus that, or just 0.9. I'm just going to type in 0.9 this time. All right, and so there's my number, 1.3333 over and over again. Um, to, four, to three places, 1.33 is where they rounded it. And that's all I need. I, I don't have to do any table searching or anything. I just have it in there. So if you can get used to this inverse CDF command, and just putting T in there, and just make sure to put in the degrees of freedom. It makes these problems a much, much easier than having to use those tables.